morning, church. I am so excited to tell you about all of the things that we're going to be doing for Easter to prepare our hearts for the resurrection. And so the first thing that we're doing, we are doing daily devotionals. And so similar to the Emotionally Healthy Relationships course, we're going to have daily videos of uh, going through the book of Mark and explaining what's happening each day as we lead up to uh, Resurrection Sunday. And so those will be posted on the app. You can go ahead and look at the first one is already posted. Uh, the second thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a fast. And so over in 1 Corinthians 5, starting in verse 6, it says, Your boasting is not good. Don't you know a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So in this spirit, we are going to cleanse ourselves by taking a fast, by fasting from Sunday through Thursday. And so you can fast from food for parts of that, for the whole of it, whatever kind of fast you want to do. But we are going to uh, humble ourselves before God as we approach the, the Resurrection Sunday and as we approach the cross. So we're going to do that. And to end our fast, we're going to do our third thing is that we're going to do a Passover meal. And so the Last Supper would have happened on Thursday. It most likely would have been a Seder dinner. And so the Seder dinner kind of kicks off the Passover week for the Jews. And so we're not going to do a Seder dinner um, because we don't want to appropriate appropriate Jewish culture, but we want to do something that can help us to, to get in the mindset, get a little bit more in touch with what is happening in the scriptures. And so um, we will be posting a document that has lays out kind of all of the different symbolism that is in the, the Seder plate, um, but a quick overview of what that meal is, there would have been some prayers to start off with. They would have read through the account of the Passover, and then they would have had this meal that all of the pieces of the meal relate back to the story. So it's a way of interacting with the story of the Passover through what we're eating. And so the three main things that we're going to focus on are uh, the lamb. And so uh, if you want to go ahead and get a lamb, you can. If not, I get it. It's lamb. It's tough <laughs> to find. Um, but that would have been one of the main components. The second main component would have been the matzah, which is the, the bread that they ate. It's unleavened bread. And so it's kind of the bread of slavery. And you can find matzah at any of the grocery stores. Um, it's just, it's in the cracker aisle. Uh, and then the third thing is the, the marar, which is the, the bitter herb. And it's typically they use horseradish as the, the vegetable, um, but it is a reminder of the bitterness of slavery. And so as Christians, we want to, we want to incorporate some of these things. So, um, some loose guidelines for this Passover meal, um, to start with, I, I recommend kind of cleaning up the, your house, just preparing for the meal. Um, I, I recommend lighting a candle to symbolize the light of, uh, of the resurrection, um, and spending time praying, reading through the account of the Passover, reading through the account of, uh, the crucifixion and, and, uh, and of the last supper and, and praying a little bit and, and then, um, celebrating and incorporating some of these, these different foods into, um, the, the meal. And so the four main themes of the Passover would have been bread, light, wine, and freedom. And so it's all about being set free from slavery. And so as Christians, we get to focus instead on being set free from sin. And so those are the things that we are recommending as just simple practices, something that we can do to incorporate more of the gospel story into our week as we lead up to Easter and, and the resurrection.